Greetings everybody. So today I'm going to do a follow-up video to my video that I did on the HDMI ARC port. And this video is going to basically answer some questions that I'm getting about this video, which I'm going to add some additional information that can help you out and anybody else that's asking questions about this video, because some people say they hook up the HDMI ARC the proper way like I instructed. Some people say they're not getting any sound. Some people say they're not getting any picture. Some people say they're getting bad sound. Some people say they're getting bad picture and a few more other problems that they're having when they're trying to hook up the HDMI ARC port to the soundbar and the TV. So in this part two of this video, I'm just going to go over some additional stuff that you might want to check on the TV and on the soundbar to make sure everything's hooked up right so you can get the best picture and sound by using the HDMI ARC port. Okay, so let's start off with the cable. The cable is very important. When you're going down this road, you want to make sure you use the best quality cable as possible. Now, I did a video on cabling, so you might want to check that out too. I'll leave a link up top where you can click on it and check out that video of the importance of HDMI cable. But I'm going to point out that you need to use a high quality cable. And this cable that I have in my hand is the HDMI high speed cable with Ethernet. So with this kind of cable, you're going to get the highest picture and sound that you can get out of your TV or your streaming device. That includes 4K, HDR, and Dolby Atmos. So don't skimp on your cable. Try to get the highest quality cable as possible. I mean, you're to spend X amount of dollars on your soundbar, especially if you buy a soundbar that's worth four or five hundred or even a thousand dollars or more. So you don't want to marry your TV and your soundbar with some cheap cable. You wouldn't do that to your spouse now, would you? So make sure that you get good quality cable. That's the number one thing you need to do because this can cause the issues of some of the things that you're having, which include bad picture and bad sound. Okay, so now let's talk about the settings on your TV. So when you go to your TV and you know your TV, I can't tell you what TV you have. These are Samsung TV. So if your settings look just like mine, then you can follow these steps. If you don't, then you can just follow the steps on your own TV. First, you want to make sure the input source is selected by some other device. For instance, this is my soundbar. If I choose this input, I'm not going to get any pictures. Why? Because I have nothing hooked up to the soundbar. This is only going to tell me that, oh, there's no picture, there's no sound because I'm feeding into the same input. So therefore you want to select another source that you feed into, which will be your TV or maybe your fire stick. This is my fire stick. So you see that input is going to come in automatically because I selected it. And then I have other inputs that I can select from. There's my Xbox. I don't have the PlayStation hooked up right now, but you need to choose other input besides the one that your soundbar is hooked up to. Don't select that one. Now your soundbar does have HDMI inputs, but if you're not using those, then don't choose the soundbar input. That could be one of your number one problem of having no picture and sound. So to clarify, don't select the input that the soundbar is on unless you have something connected to the soundbar HDMI ports. Always select another port because if you do select the source that the soundbar is connected to and there's nothing connected to the soundbar, you're going to get no picture and you're going to get no sound. Next, you want to go into your sound settings. So go down to your sound settings and make sure that the selected speaker is your soundbar. Because when you go to select speakers, you got TV, you got a soundbar. Here's another one. Here's a Bluetooth. And if you use the optical, so make sure the soundbar is selected. You'd be surprised that you don't realize that the TV is on another settings and you realize your soundbar is not playing because the wrong speaker is selected. Now, depending on what kind of TV you have, you might have a surround mode just like I have here on my Samsung TV. So if you have a Samsung TV like mine, then you can follow along. If not, you'd have to find your settings based on your TV. Now the surround sound is going to be based on if you have rare speakers. If you don't have rare speakers, then you're not really going to take advantage of the surround mode. Now without a rare speakers, the sound bar would try to simulate sound coming from the left and the right, but you won't hear those creepy sound in the back if you don't have rear speakers. Now you can choose any one of these surround sound that you prefer. I like the smart, I like the way it sounds, but you can try them for yourself and see what they sound like. I would recommend that you play a movie that has a lot of surround sound type sounds and just select any one of these and listen to it for about maybe two or three minutes. 
then select the next one and listen to that for about two or three minutes and then choose the last one and do the exact same thing. So depending on the kind of surround sound system you have built into your TV, then you can try either one of them and see which one you like the best. And then sometimes, depend on the TV, you got all these different settings that you can choose from. If you have the difference between PCM and Bitstream, make sure you choose Bitstream. And audio format, I would choose the Neo because you know that one tends to sound better to me. All of these settings are built into your TV. So go in there and check out the sound settings and play with them. I can't tell you which one is gonna work best because each TV is different, but just go in there and sample them and see what they sound like. If it sounds bad, then turn it off, choose another settings, whatever. Just go in there and experiment with your sound settings so you can get that right surround sound setting and take full advantage of your soundbar. Okay, so let's go back up to the picture settings. So on the picture size, you wanna make sure it says 16 by nine standard. There's other settings you can choose from like fit screen and zoom and all that stuff, but don't use any of that stuff. Just let the TV does its thing automatically. There's special viewing mode that you can choose from based on your TV. I have the option of having sport mode, game mode, and HDR plus mode. I choose the HDR plus mode, especially if I'm viewing a lot of movies and stuff like that. These are things you can play around with also. And as far as the advanced setting or expert setting based on what TV you have, you know you got the brightness, contrast, uh, you can adjust the color. I don't really mess around with these things. I just let them be. Now, as long as you got your picture mode set to HDR, then you're gonna get the highest quality picture out of the TV as possible. Now, one last area I wanna touch on before I get out of here is support. In your support area or probably your about section on your TV, there's usually a section called software update, especially if you have a modern TV. There's usually a section that says software update and that's gonna be on your newer TV. The older TV doesn't have software update, so if you don't see it, that means your TV is much older. But if you have one of the newer TVs that has this feature, make sure you go in there and get the latest updates, especially if the TV is not doing it automatically. Because sometimes there is like bugs in the system as far as picture and sound, or even update a port that's not acting right, and that's all part of the software updates. So that can fix a lot of issues you might be having as far as picture and sound, and probably add more functions to the TV. So do your software updates if your TV is capable of doing software updates. And if your TV has the capability of doing self-diagnostic, then go ahead and run that too so it can start testing the picture and the sound and any other features that's built into the TV. Now, if I go into self-diagnostics on my TV, I have the option to actually factory reset it because it might be something going on with a settings that I adjusted and I don't know how to get it back to the where it was. So I can just go ahead and factor reset it to just like the day I brought it from the store and set it up all over again. And as you can see, I can do sound tests, pictures tests. So if you're having issues with these things, you might wanna just go in there and check these things because it might be a little bug with the TV while you're not getting good picture or sound after you connect your device. Okay, so now that you already check all the settings on the TV as far as the picture and the sound, now it's time to move over to the soundbar if you're still having issues. Now every soundbar comes with a remote and some come with a display in front of the soundbar where you can see the things that you're changing. So if the soundbar seems like it's low or you're not getting any sound from your rear speakers because they're too low, or you know the left or the right channel is not sounding proper, it might mean that you need to do some adjustment on the soundbar to get that sound balance. So let me show you some of the things on my soundbar and you can try to look on your soundbar and see if you can adjust those settings based on what I'm telling. Now in the front of my soundbar, it has a tiny display that tells me what's going on as far as my different settings that I'm changing. Now you're definitely gonna need the soundbar remote for this process because the TV remote, even though your TV might be able to change the volume on the TV and the soundbar at the same time, it won't be able to change all the necessary settings. So you're definitely gonna need the soundbar remote. So if I press on it right now, as you can see, the input is telling me that is TV ARC. So therefore I know it's connected right to my TV because it's reading up that my TV is connected to the ARC port. If I had another input, like for instance, HDMI one, like it says right now, this is where my sound is coming from, maybe my Xbox or my PlayStation, but it's not picking up any signal. So 
when I try to play through the TV, I'm not going to hear anything. And then there's the HDMI 2 port. There's my Wi-Fi settings. There's my Bluetooth settings. That's my digital in, which is the optical connection. And then we back to HDMI, which is automatically going to switch it over to TV ARC. Now there's some other settings that you can go into, like my remote has the surround. So there's the same settings that you were seeing on the TV. Now there's some other settings that I can adjust in here, like the treble. So I can add more treble, which is the highs. And then I can add more bass. Now, if you're having sync issue, you can try to adjust the sync here. Mine is set to zero because I'm not having any issues. The next setting is the center speaker. So you can adjust the volume on the center speaker to make it sound balanced. Then I got speakers on the side of my sound bar, which I can adjust on each side. And then I got front top speakers. So I can adjust the volume on those speakers also. And then I got rear speakers. Now the rear speakers are the one that's remotely connected to the sound bar. But if you don't have rear speakers connected to the sound bar, then there's no need to make any adjustment here. Then you have this thing called virtual. So this I'm assuming is going to simulate surround sound. I got mine off because I have all surround sound speakers. Now the subwoofer itself has its own volume because all it does is output bass. Now I can adjust the bass a little bit here and it will affect the subwoofer. Now on the remote, there's a woofer button. So if I adjust that, you're going to see the SW pop up and disappear. And now I just adjusted the subwoofer volume to negative one. And now I just put it back to zero. And if I hit it again, now it's going to go up to one. I set it to zero and I'm telling you, even at zero, I can still feel the thundering bass. And I know this subwoofer goes up to probably six but six is too much. As a matter of fact, two is too much. So I usually set it at zero because it does hit hard. And the last not least is the volume. So when I hit the volume up, you see the, you know, the one and the two and the zero. So that's telling me I'm adjusting the volume on the sound bar, which is also affecting the volume that's coming out of the TV. As a matter of fact, once I hook up the HDMI ARC, it automatically take away the sound that's coming out of the TV and just feed it straight to the sound bar. So those are the settings that's available on my soundbar. Now yours might vary. You might have more or less of some of these settings, but as long as the soundbar is letting you know that the cable is connected to the ARC port to the TV and to the soundbar, then you're good to go there. Okay, so to sum this up, make sure you're using the proper cable. You want to make sure all the settings on your TV are in the right settings. And then you want to make sure your soundbar is on the right setting also. Your TV input should never be selected where the soundbar is connected. You're not going to get in the picture. You're not going to get in the sound because if you don't have anything connected to the soundbar HDMI ports, you're not going to get any feedback. On the soundbar, make sure you have the right input selected because you have all these other inputs that you can choose from if you have HDMI ports one and two or three. Now, as far as the HDMI ARC port, as long as you have it selected on your TV sound setting, it doesn't matter what port you select after that to watch your entertainment. So if you're playing from a Blu-ray player, your Xbox or your Fire Stick, or your Roku, your Apple TV, whatever device you have, select those devices and don't worry about the soundbar anymore because the soundbar is going to take care of itself. Now, most of the TVs out there are going to automatically cut off the sound that's coming out of the TV and let the soundbar take care of the sound. I can definitely speak with the Samsung TV because those are the TVs I have. So that's a little bit more explanation I wanted to just put out there because I know a lot of viewers are watching that video that I did. So I hope this bit of information helped. There's a lot of videos I do on this home theater setup and you might want to check those out too. I'm going to list them all in the description. So you can just click on them and watch them and see if you can learn anything that will help you solve your problems. But I want to stress it out that you need the proper cable. Don't go cheap on your cables. You already spent all that money on your fancy TV and your fancy soundbar. So don't get the cheap cable, get good quality cable. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you for taking the time for watching it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm here to help you solve any problems you have with your home theater setup. So have a good one and I'll see you next time.